What's up guys? You guys have been asking for this and I've decided to finally deliver. So um, today we are going to be taking an Epson EcoTank printer and we will be converting it to a sublimation printer and then we are going to be sublimating our first mug. So I'm going to take you from start to finish, um, going from our printer to sublimating and I will cover everything that I have learned so far. Um, now the other thing I am doing for you guys is I'm going to be providing the template that I am using on this mug so you can create your own using the template. So let's get started and set up our printer. All right guys, so I've just unboxed my new Epson printer. Uh, this is the ET2750. I picked this one up at Costco. I know they're um, kind of hard to find right now, but uh, any Epson Eco printer should work with what I'm about to show you in terms of setup. Um, so any of them, just look for Epson Eco printer um, and grab whatever you can find because I know that they're kind of hard to find right now. Uh, anyways. I haven't removed the tape yet on my Epson printer, so I'm going to go ahead and do all of that. But I just wanted to show you what it came with. So there's a CD, which I don't really know who uses CDs these days anymore. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I think this is the software you can probably download directly from the website if you didn't have that CD. And there's some instructions here. There's the power cord. And then there's also the ink here that we're going to be using to fill our ink tank. Now, I, was, I just want to go over a quick note. Um, if you are going to be sublimating, make sure you get a printer, like a brand new printer, because it's going to be a pain in the butt to empty the ink in your previous printer and then put the sublimation ink. Uh, you're probably going to get like streaky pictures or it's not going to sublimate properly, okay? So you want to make sure that you're working with, with either a brand new printer or you thoroughly clean out that old printer because I don't know how it was going to, to go when you start um, changing the ink in that now the other thing to note is that there are a lot of printers these days that still have the traditional ink cartridges that you pop into the actual printer. And the reason why you don't want to go with those is because a lot of those ink cartridges, they have a little chip um, on the ink cartridge that basically tells the printer that it's like, you know, a compatible ink cartridge. And a lot of um, those little cartridges are not compatible when you buy them on Amazon. <laughs> so. Yeah, this way you don't run to that issue. It's going to use exactly whatever you fill um, the, these tanks with, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of, so this is the Epson ink that comes with the printer, but we're not going to be using that because we're not actually using this as a normal printer. We're going to turn it into a sublimation printer. And this is nice and easy. All you need to do is fill your ink tank with the sublimation ink. So you do need special ink for this, okay? Now, the one I am using is from Hippo, and this is the Hippo Sublimation Ink. It comes in these four vials here for each of their colors with syringes, um, or they also offer a pack that has the compatible nozzles. So you'll notice here that these have the these little white nozzles that you're going to be using to put the ink in the machine. The Hippo ones come with ones, these are, this is a larger format, so this one doesn't have the nozzles, but it has a little bit more ink, which is why I bought that. Um, and I'm going to show you how we can take this and still put it in our machine a little bit easier. Um, I'll show you both the syringe way, and then I'll show you my preferred way, okay? And uh, please do make sure to check out the link in the description down below. They are offering a special discount if you use my link in the description. So please take a look at that, and I'm gonna show you how well this ink will do um, when we are using it for our machine here. All right? All right, so let's start filling our tank. Now, all you need to do is open up, open up your printer. Now, this lid here is for the scanner, so that's not what you're looking for. You wanna open up this entire thing so you can see inside the machine here, okay? And then on the side on, over here is your ink tank. And you'll notice that there's these little uh, blue tabs. You're gonna push those up. And now you can actually access your ink nozzles there. You can see I already started filling my magenta just to make sure I know how everything works before I show you guys. 
Um, and yeah, let's get started. So I've got the sublimation ink on the left here and then the Epson ink on the right. And I'm going to show you the two different methods that you can use to fill this up. So the Hippo ink actually came with a set of gloves, which was kind of a nice touch. Um, so we don't get our hands all messy when we're working with the stuff. So it comes with the syringe and it comes with these little needle bits. All we're going to do is take our needle and we're going to put it on our syringe. And you're going to open this up and you're going to put this inside the bottle and you're going to pull. Now it doesn't work very well if you're pulling just straight up because it gets a lot of air inside and it'll be really difficult to get the ink when uh, when you're down here because the needle won't actually reach. So if you tilt it sideways, it makes it a lot easier to get the ink. So I'm just gonna pull as much as possible up. I'm gonna put that in and push down and then just slowly push Slowly push that ink in. Awesome. And that's it for the syringe method. So you're going to go ahead and keep doing that until you are out of ink. Now, if you don't want to do that because it's very time consuming, the other thing that we can do is try to repurpose these bottles. So what I've got here is an empty water bottle. And I'm just going to take one of these. And this is the part that you're going to put on top of the machine for the ink to, and push it for the ink to come out, okay, to fill the machine. Um, but these tops here, they just, it's a little tight, but if you turn really hard, they just unscrew like that. So what I'm going to do is pour this into my water bottle and I'm going to wash this out and fill it with my sublimation ink. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've washed this out and I've actually already started filling it. All you need to do is take this off and you're going to squeeze it right into the bottle with this nozzle off. I had an unfortunate accident here with the magenta, as you can see, when I was cleaning that out. So I do recommend washing these with gloves on because that was very unfortunate and my hands are now stained. Um, anyways, so take your, um, your filled ink bottle and you're just going to flip that upside down. And it literally does all the work for you. You don't need to squeeze or anything. You just plop it in place. You can see that filling up there. And that's it. That's how we fill up our tank. Now we're just going to follow through with our printer setup instructions um, to do our test print. So I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to follow the instructions to do the test print according to my printer instructions here. And then we are going to move on to uh, our actual first sublimation design. I'm going to show you how we can do it. I've got a template for you and we're going to make our first mug. All right, see you in a minute. All right, so let's start designing. Um, so what I've done is I've created a template for you that you can customize in Cricut Design Space. Um, so head over to my blog. I will have the link in the description down below and you can grab that template and then you can play around with it and uh, I'm going to show you how you're going to use that. Okay. So essentially what we're doing with Cricut, Cricut Design Space is uh, we're going to be using this template so you can create kind of a mosaic picture that you can put on your mug. Now um, if you have like Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever, then I mean, by all means, do it that way. I am just showing you with Cricut Design Space because I'm pretty sure most of you are coming to me. Um, if you are, if you have seen any videos on my channel, I mostly uh, do stuff with Cricut, so I figure this is the easiest way for you guys to uh, play with the design aspects of this. All right. So once you've gone ahead and you uploaded the template file. 
And you're just gonna insert that into Cricut Design Space. Now, I'm not sure why, because I did size this properly um, in <laughs> when I created this, but for some reason, the SVG makes it super big when it's uploaded, um, which is fine. All you need to do is adjust the width here. So I'm going to make this nine in width. And this works for the mugs that I'll be using, which are the Amuse brand that I bought on Amazon. If you are using a different size mug, then please take a moment and measure it to make sure that this um, template will fit, okay? Uh, so yeah, measure the height here and then just measure around the mug to make sure that this will actually fit on your mug before you go ahead and start making any adjustments. Okay, cool. So what I've done is I've created a block for best mom ever because Mother's Day is coming up. Um, but I mean, if you don't want to use that, you can change this block up for something else. You can create your own custom block, um, whatever you want to do. This is just here for you as a template so you can so you can utilize it. Now, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to upload all our photos. So I'm making one of my daughter here and I'm just going to grab a photo real quick. This is actually my daughter, my husband, and I'm going to shrink that right down. Okay, so I'm going to shrink this down to fit um, width wise in one of these squares. Now I'm going to grab I've color coded these for you guys so that they're easier to find. It's this last one here. Oh, sorry. First, we need to ungroup everything because you're not going to be able to play with anything like that. So let's grab this bottom one and let's put the image on top. I'm um, sorry, the image on bottom of that layer. Okay. And we're going to take this layer now and we're going to go to operation and draw. Okay. So you should have a draw there. You can select pen or whatever. It doesn't really matter which one, um, but basically what that does is it kind of gives you a border, right? So now you can kind of adjust your picture to how you'd like it to fit in the box. So something like that. Um, next, you're going to grab the two layers there. So I'm holding a shift down when I'm clicking on these layers and I'm going to hit slice. Now, when you slice it, basically it like cuts it out from each other. So I'm going to delete that. That's extra. I'm going to delete this. This is extra. And then you are left with your picture for that size frame. All right. And that's pretty much it for how you're going to use this template. Now you're going to go ahead and you're going to do the same thing for all the other boxes. Um, and once you are happy with all of that, what you're going to do is select everything and you are going to flatten. Okay. Um, and the reason why we want to flatten that is because we are going to print. It says then cut, but we're not actually going to cut. We're just going to print. So when you head to the next screen and you go to make it, you should only have one page. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to mirror this because we are sublimating. So we want to be able to read it. Otherwise, if you don't mirror it, it's going to, it's going to like go on the mug mirrored. So then it's going to, you know what I mean? Like you can't really read what it says. Okay. So make sure you mirror that. Um, and yeah, now we're going to go ahead and continue and we're going to send that to our printer. Okay. So I've just set up the Epson 2750. Um, and I'm going to disable the bleed. We don't want these images to be fuzzy. So I'm going to disable that. I'm going to send that to print. Okay. And that's all we're going to use Cricut Design Space for. We're basically using it kind of as a photo editor um, to get everything together. And then once you hit print, make sure you put the paper into your printer properly. Um, I am using a sub paper, so uh, it has a front and back side, but some, I know some brands don't come with that, um, like, a, like a writing to indicate the back side. So if that's the case, then Pay attention to the paper when you take it out of the box because I think it has a direction on the box. Um, otherwise, yeah, just pop that into your printer. It's the uh, the printed side goes up, is facing up on the back feeder. And once we've printed that out, we are going to cut this out and I'm going to show you how we're going to sublimate this onto a mug. All right. Okay, so I have printed my design out. It's got the print then cut border, which is great because I kind of know where to cut. Um, though it doesn't really matter, it just helps me cut a little bit straighter on my cutter. 
And I'm just going to line that up on my cutter and cut off the sides there. And yeah, you want to make sure you cut off that black part, okay? These black lines, because otherwise, because it's printed with sublimation ink, it will go onto your mug. So make sure that line is completely off. All right. Now, sublimation is all about pressure and heat. So we want to make sure we've got good pressure on this and we're applying the right heat, right amount of heat, okay? Um, so what you're going to do is it should be mirrored, right? Make sure you double check that it's mirrored before you put this on. You're going to put that and line that up on your mug. And I'm using heat tape here. This is the Cricut brand heat tape, um, but you can use whatever heat tape you want. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you have handy. And I'm going to tape this down. And I find the most finicky parts in terms of image transfer are the edges here against the handle. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but first, just let's just tape this down. Press it all the way down, make sure you don't have any air bubbles. And tape that down. Okay, awesome. Now, I just want to talk about three different methods here, okay? What I'm going to be using is, um, is a mug wrap. Okay, this is a silicone mug wrap that I got on Amazon. I will have a link in the description down below. You'll see that there's some image transfer here and I wanna talk about that. Um, basically what had happened was I put my mug in the oven for far too long. So you can see here, this is burnt, right? This is completely burnt. <laughs> we wanna avoid that. Um, that's why it's some image transferred onto here. This is still usable. It's just that's why you see that there in case you're wondering, okay? Is it because I completely burned this mug? I put this in here for way too long. Um, I, I think mugs are, like, I think ovens are a little bit different, but like I've, I've learned my oven kind of cooks things pretty hot and pretty fast. So um, I put that mug in for like 12 minutes and that was way too long. So uh, yeah. Now the other thing that you could do is you'll see a lot of other YouTubers or people online that will do, um, they'll do a shrink wrap around the mug. For some reason that didn't really work out very well for me. And what I mean by that is you can see on the sides here that this didn't transfer as well. And for some reason like even on the bottom here. I don't know if I just did the shrink wrap wrong or if it's because mine actually tore a little bit, but um, it didn't transfer very well for me. So I really like this silicone wrap because I'm able to actually get it right around the handle where the shrink wrap, the shrink wrap kind of like wrapped around the handle and I think it didn't give me as much pressure along, um, along the space here beneath the handle. Okay, so anyways, once you have good good pressure and that's taped down, okay, you're going to wrap up the mug. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I think I actually bought a wrap that's slightly too small. <laughs> I think this is for an 11 inch, 11 ounce mug and I am using a 12 ounce mug. But it still fits, it just takes a little bit more work. There we go. All right. So that is giving good pressure to my mug here, okay? Now I'm gonna pop that in my oven. And this is just a regular um, like convection oven that I, I use for crafts. So uh, if you decide to do this, you like make sure you buy one only for crafting, okay? Like don't get one and then try to cook food in and afterwards, okay? It's not safe once you've used it for crafts. Um, so I used to use this to make uh, little little clay charms, um, but yeah, now it's great for sublimation. So um, yeah, 
buy one dedicated to crafting. And the great thing about this is that now you can pretty much sublimate anything in there. So I've got, you know, I've got some Cricut coasters that I can throw in there. Um, though I mean this you can use an iron on anyways, but um, pretty much any blank that you have now you can just kind of throw in an oven, which is why I love the oven versus buying a dedicated machine like a mug press. Um, this is fabulous. Okay, now the only tricky thing about it is you need to find the happy spot for your oven. For me, what worked very well for me was it's 400 degrees Fahrenheit and for the mugs I did three minutes and then I flipped it and I did another three minutes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I will show you the final unwrapping. <laughs> Alright, so... I've got my heat gloves here. Make sure you are wearing heat gloves when you are working with this stuff because everything is hot, hot, hot. All right, I've got my cooling rack here ready to go. And we're just gonna take this off and see what we're working with here. So, so far it looks pretty good. You can see through the paper here that the image is showing through and that's exactly what we wanna see. So that is looking very nice so far. Doesn't look like we have any burn marks. All right. That looks perfect. Look at that. Oh, that is beautiful. We've got full coverage on both ends here. And all the colors transferred, that looks wonderful. So now I'm just gonna let that cool down and you can toss this out. All right, my mug has cooled down and this is how it looks. I am so happy with how it turned out um, and I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and I will see you next time, guys. Goodbye.